Hello and welcome to the second part in our free RTOS on the RP2040 tutorial. In this video, we're going to cover what a real-time operating system is, why you might want to use one, why you might not want to use one, and then we're going to demonstrate how to make a fairly straightforward two-threaded program or two-task program with some inter-task communication. Our previous video showed you how to set up VS Code in order to use it in your free RTOS RP2040 based projects. If you haven't seen that video, then I'll link it in the cards above for you. I would recommend watching that one before this video so you can code along with this tutorial. Okay, so let's get started with the first question that some of you might be wondering. What actually is a real-time operating system? Well, I think that the easiest way to, to view it is to compare it to the types of programs that you are probably programming now. These programs are sometimes referred to as bare metal programming, and this is a program that follows a fairly straightforward process featuring a series of tasks that are ran in sequence, one after another, often in some kind of main loop or sometimes called a super loop. There are many advantages to this sort of programming. One is that it is very straightforward. That is actually a big benefit when it comes to things like debugging, for example. Another advantage is that the same programs written in bare metal will be much more lightweight in terms of CPU and RAM overheads than the same program written within a real-time OS. However, there are some disadvantages. I mean, of course there are, or no one would be using real-time operating systems. The main disadvantage of this type of programming is when the timing of the execution of your tasks become important. The problem with sequentially se executing tasks is that if we look at this diagram, task B must wait until task A has finished, for example. So let's imagine that task A in this loop is taking an especially long time for whatever reason, and task B, which itself is waiting for task A to complete, is trying to pull some data from a sensor or gain some unit user input, for example, it is very possible that some data will be lost as task A is taking its time. A real-time operating system can solve these timing problems by being able to run tasks seemingly concurrently. I say seemingly as it isn't quite running all of the tasks at the same time because the scheduler built into the RTOFs will allocate a portion of CPU time to execute each task. However, a disadvantage of this system is the amount of memory required for the RTOS to suspend or pause a task whilst remembering the state of that task, where it got in its execution, all the states of the variables for example, then go and execute another task, suspend that one, remember where that one was, over and over. That means that a lot more RAM that means that more RAM is used than the equivalent bare metal program. I want to note that it is possible with a dual core processor like the RP2040, it is possible to run things concurrently, but it makes things a lot more complicated. And so for this basic tutorial, we'll be sticking to single core execution until one of the later videos where we will actually cover um, SMP or multi multiprocessing. I also want to clarify that you may come across the terms tasks and threads, and in some cases they may be used interchangeably when looking into real-time OSs. Typically, a task is a set of instructions that are loaded into memory, and a thread is a unit of CPU utilization with its own program counter and memory. However, free RTOS refers to tasks as something closer to threads, and I think some other RTOSs such as ARMS CMSIS RTOS or Keel RTX5 will refer to the same thing as threads. So if you are venturing into the world of RTOSs, it's worth checking the respective documentations. I will be here, I will be sticking with using tasks as we're currently using free RTOS. Okay, so hopefully now you know a little bit more about why you would or wouldn't want to use an RTOS. Um, and now we're going to focus a little bit more on tasks, what they are, and how to communicate between them using something called a queue. A task is essentially a small program in its own right, which has an entry point, and the task will run forever within an infinite loop and will not exit. Free RTOS tasks must not be allowed to return from their function in any way, which means they cannot contain a return statement 
and must not be allowed to execute past the end of the function. If a task is no longer required, then it should be explicitly deleted. A free RTOS task must, must also return void and take a void parameter. And this is in case you want to pass any variables to the task when you initialize it. So now that we have an idea about what tasks are, we probably now want to know how to communicate between them. There are lots of reasons why you might want to pass information between tasks, and a queue is the most common and probably the most straightforward method of doing this. A queue is a FIFO, or first in, first out buffer, which means that one task, say task A, can write data to the queue, and when it writes data to the queue, it's written to the first position. If another task, task B, writes to the same queue, the data appears in the second position. When task C, for example, wants to read from this buffer, or queue, it reads the first position, which is then removed, and the remaining data in the queue is essentially shifted forward one place. This method of inter-task communication is what is called thread safe, meaning that the data during reading and writing cannot be interrupted by another task, which could corrupt it. For example, global variables are not inherently thread safe, as you could writing to one could be interrupted by a different, uh, different task. To write to the queue, the xQSend function is used, which has the arguments of the queue that you want to write to, the data you want to send, and also a delay to wait in case the queue is full. If the queue is full and this delay is exceeded, then the data can be retried or discarded as the function will return an error code, which you can then use in say an if statement, for example. On the other hand, the xQReceive function is used to read data from the queue. This function has the arguments of the queue that you want to read from and also a delay to wait for in case the queue is empty. So it will wait and see if any data is added to the queue for the duration of this delay. If the queue is empty and this delay is exceeded, then the function will return an error telling us that the queue was in fact empty. The queue management page on the free RTOS website contains all the information on these functions that you could possibly need. So it is worth taking a look at the documentation in case you need to clear anything up. So I think I've tried to keep this bit of theory relatively short and hopefully I've covered the main points for you. Let's actually implement these things as it will give you a better idea of how it all works. So we are going to modify the Blinky program that we used in the previous part of this tutorial. I'll link it again in the cards above if you haven't seen it. We are going to use two tasks and some basic inter-task communication. If you haven't seen the previous video, you can simply clone it from the GitHub repo if you want if you want to skip through uh, the previous video. Just make sure to use the recursive command to ensure that you download the free RTOS submodule. I'll leave the command down, uh, down in the description for you. What we are going to do is make one task handle switching the LED on and off, and then it will tell the other task what state the LED is in. The other task will wait until it receives a change in state of the LED before printing out the state of the LED over USB serial, which we can then see on a serial monitor, for example. We need to make a quick change to the CMake lists file, which is next to our main.c file. As a quick note, the, the main.c file and the CMake lists file that we modify in this tutorial, um, the updated ones will be on my website if you want to copy and paste any code across. So we need to enable the USB output using the pico enable stdio usb function with the name of the executable which is blink and then one we then disable the uart output with a similar function just instead of usb we say uart and then a zero instead of one the rest of the changes we need to make are within the main.c file first things first we need to include a new header file called q.h then we need to create a global variable of type q handle. We do this using static q handle underscore t xq. And then we can set it to null at the moment as we're going to set this up later on. Okay, so next I'm going to create a new task and call it USB task. It's going to take a void pointer called pv parameters. 
I'm going to leave the contents of this task empty for a moment and move on to our main function where I'm going to create the queue. I'm going to set the XQ variable using the function xqCreate with the arguments of the length of the queue, which we're simply going to use one because as soon as something is written to the queue, it will be removed by the USB task. So we shouldn't need it for any longer than one uh, piece of data. This is then followed by the item size. In our case, we're communicating with unsigned integers. So we simply use size of unsigned int. And that is our queue created. Whilst we are in this main function, we need to configure the task that we just created, the empty one. I'm going to copy and paste the x task create function we used for the LED task, but change LED task to USB task. A good shortcut within VS Code to copy and paste lines of code is to highlight the code that you want to copy, hold Alt and Shift, and then hit the down arrow. That is our main function ready. Now let's go back to our LED task function. What we want to do now is create a variable that we will use to indicate the state of the LED to our USB task. I am just creating an unsigned integer called UI value to send. Then I'm going to set this variable to one when the LED is turned on and then zero once the LED is turned off. Then we use the function XQ send with the name of the queue and a pointer to the UI value to send variable. And then we send the ticks to wait to zero as the queue should always be empty. This function is called after the variable is changed both times. Okay, that's our LED task finished. Finally, we need to write our USB task function, which will read out the state of the LED. The first thing we do is create an unsigned integer variable called UI received value, which will hold the value that we read from the queue. Then we create an infinite while loop, and then we read from the queue using XQ receive function with the value of the name of the queue, a pointer to the variable that we just created, a delay set to the value of port max delay. Finally, we create a simple if logic to check if the value received is a one or a zero, and then print the result over the USB serial interface using the printf function. Now, all we need to do is build our program and upload it to your board. Once it is uploaded, you should see that your LED is blinking on and off. And if you open a serial mon monitor, here I'm using putty, you should see the following output lining up with the LED blinking. So hopefully this video has taught you a bit more about real-time operating systems and whether or not you should implement one yourself. We have also covered a bit more about how to create tasks within FreeRTOS and implement basic inter-task communication in the form of a queue. The next video in this series will cover task scheduling in much more detail. Let us know if you have any suggestions on content you would like us to cover in this series on FreeRTOS, and if you have found this video helpful, then please consider leaving a like and subscribing. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, have a nice day.